Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. You, we're coming at you on June 25th in the heart of all kinds of craziness, COVID-related riots, statue takedowns. Uh, you've heard the news from the left and right perspectives, and hopefully we'll give you a little bit of sanity now. Uh, in the upper left corner, uh, I have Leon Brathwaite. Uh, he is a retired engineer from the state of California. And uh, in my upper right-hand corner, I have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett. And he's a pilot from the state of California. <clears throat> so, and my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so, let's get right down to it. Uh, statue takedowns, they seem to be happening just about everywhere. It's so almost sort of a religiosity that's occurring now with it. Uh, we've seen, started with Civil War uh, soldier statues, and it has progressed to Jefferson, Washington, Grant, Lincoln, abolitionists, you name it. If it looks like a statue, it's coming down. <laughs> Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, people that are pulling these statues down never built anything in their lives, and they're they're pulling down statues of people that, under very difficult circumstances, in times long ago, where mores and customs and all this stuff were completely different. Uh, you know, not not defending the things that they were partaking in, but the things they were partaking in in most cases or many cases uh, were either legal or or uh, accepted and you know especially under under con the the conquerors of the times when you know the the value of life was was way less back then and anyway but but the thing that I think is the worst thing is the people that are pulling these statues down, that, you know, for the most part, at least, unless something's really going on with the youth of today that enables them to have a big track record of, or a long track record of building things, they haven't built anything, you know, and here they are tearing these things down. Now, I'm not a defender of statues, you know, I, honestly, uh, yeah, you know, they want to be erected, that's fine with me if they want to be taken away for whatever dumb reason that's fine too but for people to just uh you know randomly uh or even if it's organized you know just take it upon themselves to destroy property that someone else owns even if it's you know community uh that's just wrong i mean that's just so wrong and again i just don't want to be confused that uh you know that i'm defending the the thing or whatever the thing might be, uh, could it be, you know, that uh, Father Unipero Sarah enslaved Indians to build his missions. Okay, yeah, you know, I'm not defending that, but then I'm not, uh, I didn't live back then either. And, uh, you know, you see what I'm saying. Anyway, there you have it. How about you, Liam? Well, I don't know. I don't know what is the point of, of taking down the statues. I mean, what are they trying to tell us? If we take down the statues, we're going to change history. Yeah. Did we have bad things being done to to human beings, blacks in particular, in in America at one time? Yes. But if you take down the statue, does it change that? No. If you do, are we going to change what happened with with American Indians? No, it will not change anything. But you know, there's something here that's going on here that nobody's talking about. Everybody want to take down statues of these people who they say was involved in slavery, they were involved in this, they were involved in that. Okay, who are the angels we're going to put up? You mean you have some angels to take their place? Who, who are we going to put up in their place to say, well, oh, these are the angels we could, we, we, we could accept? And there's a the underlying all of that, there's a major hypocrisy. They want to take down statues. They want to change names of places because it represents somebody who was involved in slavery or somebody who was a racist or whatever and that kind of stuff and things like that. Well, how about Robert Byrd, who became a major figure in the, in the U.S. Senate? He used to be a member of the Ku Klux Klan. About 30% of the buildings in, in, in West Virginia is probably named after him. Should we? What about that? Nobody's talking about, about that one. Nobody's talking yeah. about it. 
about changing those those names or those buildings. How about just give, Johnson? Just give them time. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they'll get no, to it. <laughs> no, I am saying I am saying they will never get to people like Lyndon Johnson or Robert Byrd because they are more interested. They are more interested in anybody who they see as part of the the white supremacists. Okay, the white supremacist I got movement. One. Okay, I just so thought as, of as, one, your, as opposed to Lyndon Johnson. Well, he signed the Voted Rights Act, so he loved black people. And Robert Byrd, well, you know, he renounced his membership in the Ku Klux Klan. You know, it, he was in his 20s. So it, that is forgivable, according to them. So we don't have to go after him. They're not going to go after him. They're not going to. This is the hypocrisy that is going on. That is why you cannot believe these people when they take down these statues. These statues, th this is some empty gesture of nothingness. That's what it is. I got an idea. That's a good question. Who would you put up? Uh, how about I'm, I vote for Barack Obama, a statue of Barack Obama, only dropped 26,000 bombs on seven di different nations in 2016, his last year alone as president. Also got us involved in helping the Saudis, those head chopping off wonders of uh, paragons of morality and restraint against Yemen that killed tens of thousands by cholera and starvation. And what's the solution for cholera? Clean water. So, you know, he, without his complicity with that, Saudi Arabia would never, ever have been able to pull that off themselves. And that's just one out of the seven nations that we dropped, that he, Barack Obama, dropped bombs on in 2016. So there's a pillar of morality and restraint right there that we could everybody agrees that he's just a saint among men and absolutely pure as the wind driven snow barack obama put him up there what do you think well tim you, you bring up a good point that one person saying is another person sinner you know in some of these exactly. cases but but this yeah. is uh you know brings up a, a sort of a I, I think this is a moment for libertarians to really stand on principle here and and give some give some common sense to people on both sides on this issue because I you know I, I I think the larger issue is why is the government involved in putting up statues in the first place you know I mean it's 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 one thing you know if it's a private statue on private property that's somebody's you know private property decision but why should one person be able to inflict their saint which may be another person's sinner on the rest of us you know I mean at the, in perpetuity. Um, you know, and, and, and to just yeah, to th well, throw a little more on this for you, it, you know, go to the founding fathers and the founding fathers did not, you know, think this was a good idea. And you can look to their history of how they uh, regarded money uh, on coinage. They did not put an image of the president on the early money and it didn't happen yeah. for over 100 years. The only image on money was Lady Liberty was the only image yeah. on the money and, yeah. and images of birds and other stuff. <laughs> I know eagles. Eagles. But, you know, Screaming eagles. Screaming yeah. yeah. eagles. Uh, have to I mean, maybe if you were a pigeon, that might be offensive to you. <laughs> it's not an eagle yeah. coming at you, but, but you know, right. for the most part. You know? <laughs> buffaloes. Don't forget you buffaloes. Oh, and yeah. an Indian head. Yeah. Of, oh, how about that? Oh, gee, what happened? We conquered the Indians and we put them on our coinage. Uh, put but, a picture of a of yeah. an Indian head, you know, yeah, for, Indian for, head nickel. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Yeah. The Indian head penny was not actually, uh, you know, it wasn't until 1908 that we had our first president on the money, and that was uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln penny. Interesting. Uh, but, yeah. but prior to that, you know, they didn't have any. In fact, I'm going to share an image with you guys that I have. Uh, it's the Fujio penny, and the Fujio penny was actually designed by Ben Franklin. That was the first penny. And I'm going to show you guys what this image looks like here. So you're going to have to let me know if you see the screen okay. Um, not yet. Okay, just a second nope, here. Not yet. Okay. You guys seeing it now? Oh, there we go. Oh, yes, now yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is the oh, Fujio yeah. penny designed in 1787 or maybe slightly before that by Ben Franklin. And I want to draw your, we are your one. attention. To these to, to these two images one there's no picture of a person they're not aggrandizing any they're not making a saint out of any politician for us to worship you know a leader of the state to be worshiped but you know there's no mention of god you know there's no mention of any kind of indoctrination and if you look at the image on the right 
It's 13 rings joined together wow. representing the 13 colonies, and it says, we are one. And I mean, if, if, yeah, and if, if you couldn't think of a more, more, uh, you know, and here it is, we are one. And if you can't think of a more applicable message from the past, you know, and uh, of, of the craziness that we've gotten ourselves into because we, we went away from principle, um, you know, I just can't think of, uh, of, of, of a better message from our founders to say, hey, you know, you guys, you kind of lost the ball in, you know, in worshiping yeah. heads of state. <laughs> except, except the flip side of that coin said, yeah. mind your business. Mind your business. Oh, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Holy Toledo. Okay. My, yeah. um, the, my, my, um, well, I'm, I'm not really a libertarian. I'm, I'm a conservatarian. So the conservative part of me is going to show up here a little bit. Okay. We're working so, on you. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to take a little slightly different view. I, I think there's some value in us understanding our history. And some of that comes through the, the monuments that we have. Now, some of it is going to be good, and some of it is going to be bad. Now, yeah, I can understand your point, Jason, about how about the government being involved in these sort of things, and the government putting the images of some of our founders on our, on our money and that kind of stuff, and we, you know, we could probably start treating them like little kings and, and nobles and that kind of stuff, which is explicitly banned in our constitution. But I think there's value in history and culture. And I think the people who was behind the shaping of this land, the land where liberty and justice and the pursuit of happiness is so very important. I think those people are important to our well-being today. The people who wrote the Constitution, the people who wrote the Declaration of Independence, I think those things are important. And I think that we should understand and we should know them. And that comes through pieces of history, pieces of paper, people, parts of monuments. And I think those things are worth preserving. So that's the conservative part of me, even though I could understand your, your libertarian point of view on, the, on this point. I just have a little bit of pushback for you, though, on this, uh, Leon, and uh, it's uh, two things. One, we've had these monuments, and and yet that hasn't helped us that much. I mean, we, we've got a populace who's running around tearing it all down. So I'm not sure that it's accomplishing the message that you're thinking of. But, I mean, I, I completely revere these people, too. I mean, I think that Ben Franklin and, and George Washington, you know, the, yeah. his, the, 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 the guy who handed over power peacefully in the birth yes. of the nation. I mean, these are, these are on yeah, order. Yeah, these are tremendous accomplishments, you know, and, and it should be celebrated as as monumental great steps for mankind and liberty. But I guess does it, does it have to be done through public statues or should, could it be done through private statues? I mean, if you think about churches, you know, we got all these statues of Jesus in churches and, you know, nobody seems to be complaining that much and we're not putting them up in the public square. So do we really so, have to have They have just them? haven't gotten to those. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But I mean, that's a case of private, private groups, private property rights. They're celebrating statues of what they adore and they're not, you know, it's not creating a huge problem yet as Tim mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I'm a, like, I agree with both sides, I guess, because I'm, I'm, good with uh, erecting statues to important people throughout history as, as a re reminder of their uh, accomplishments. And I'm also, uh, I can, I can see, well, uh, you know, I, maybe we don't want to put our money uh, into that because it's, it's ultimately coming from the taxpayers. So, um, you know, I, I can see both sides, and I, I know Leon can too, but uh, I'm okay with the statues. I'm not like, you know, do I, would I go up and, like some have done, and try to defend the statues from the people trying to tear them down? No, I wouldn't do that, but I, at the same time, uh, don't uh, tolerate tearing down of, of statues. It's just, it's wrong in, in yeah. every way you can think about it being wrong. I don't care what they, they think, the the people that are doing it because they're not thinking especially the one they had the statue pulled over the top of him knocked him out and he's yeah. in the hospital yeah yeah you know and anyway it just the whole thing is is just so it's evil 
in but my the, opinion. The, the, the yeah. bottom line is, the bottom line is, okay, men are not angels. And I don't okay. care who you're going to choose. I don't care who you choose to put up there. They, they're going to be problematic. Take Martin Luther King. It's a man I revere. I, I have quoted his, him, him several times on this show. It, but he was no angel. And he was known not to be an angel, even though he yeah. had a big reverend in front of his name. Sure. But the work he did, the work he did in terms of bringing civil rights to black people in this country is monumental. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have a problem oh. with him, with us putting up a statue. I, I understand your point, Jason. I'm not totally disagreeing yeah. with you. But I don't have a problem right. with him being up there. But if we're going to only look for the angels, then nobody could be up there. Right. We're, and we're and, yeah. and don't and Leon, you, you said he he's he did monumental work for black people, which he did. But he also did monumental work for all people of all True. races and good and, point. And, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good point. And, and it's yeah. Yeah, anyway. OK, that's just that's no, all that's I a valid point. I like it. That's yeah. a valid point. Yes. Yeah, because, because <laughs> we uh, us uh, myself as a white person you know, revere Martin Luther King like I do Thomas Jefferson and, and sure. George Washington and, yeah. and people like that. I, I really look up to what they accomplish. And yeah, the, everyone's flawed. My, me too. You know, um, <laughs> so yeah, hey, <laughs> here's, here's a message for the people tearing down the statues. The first person who is without sin can tear the first statue down. There you go. How about that one? Oh, there did I go. take that? Did I plagiarize that a little bit from some? I think you did, but it, it's okay. I, I will accept it. It's okay. Yes, I think you did, but it's okay. Yeah, but Tim, you're, you're arguing about, point. you're bringing principle into this, and I think most of them would uh, just say, I don't have sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfect. Yeah. They're so full of virtue signaling that I don't think that. <laughs> That's true. I forgot. I forgot you're absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, this, this brings up something though that you know, I we all I'm sure would agree that if we saw a statue of Washington, we'd see that was a great thing. We wouldn't have a problem pulling it down. And if we saw a statue of Martin Luther King, all of us would think that's a great thing and don't have a problem with people pulling it down. But what if somebody today comes up and you know they want to put up a statue of Che Guevara or something, you know, in the oh, town square yeah. or something else? Yeah. I, I mean, are are you know are we going to be okay with that? I mean, if the you know in the end. If it's if it's going to represent if it's going to be a, a representative democracy of any kind, then the public square means it's got to be whatever the majority wants, and in some places, what the majority wants is pretty damn scary. <laughs> I, I I personally just rather that the government play it neutral and don't get involved in pushing you know different preferences because I mean I can look in a history book and find out all about George Washington. And I, you know, the, the, the history stands on its own without necessarily needing a big tower out in the middle of a city. You can, you can find a thing, a few things out about Che Guevara too. That you, you don't <laughs> yeah, like. that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Yeah. And I, yeah, so, you know, I'm sorry, Tim, did I cut you off? I'm sorry. Nope. No, I was done. Uh, J Jason, I, I take your point. Okay. Honestly, I do take your point. Okay. If, if somebody wanted to put our, um, a statue of change where I'm going to have a problem with it. Okay, quite frankly, I will. Okay, and even though I'm defending the whole idea of statues here, but I'm going to have a problem with that. But I'm going to give. I'm going to say say it this way. As long as our elected representatives are voting on this thing, I'm going to have to support it. If I say that that these people are going to represent me for the next five years, next four years, next two years, whatever it is, and they voted on this, I'm going to have to live with it. Now, that means at some point in time, maybe I'll get a different government, I'll get a different person representing me, and he may vote, he or she may vote differently. When that happens, I'm going to find out that too. But I'm still going to say, even though I accept your point, that there's value in our history, and I think, and I think, the monuments, the papers, the whatever it is you want to do to, to represent these people who made this country what it is, I think there's value in it. Okay. What that value is, I probably can't tell you, but I think there's value in it. Well, I think one thing that we can all certainly agree upon with this is that however a statue is decided whether or not it should be in the town square, it should be an orderly and legal process where, you know, it, it somehow right. has some... And, and, and I mean, clearly, you know, these mindless mobs, you know, running around playing to be about social justice and then tearing down statues of abolitionists. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in, fact, 
Yeah, there, there's a threat the tonight where they've said they're going to tear down a statue of Lincoln, uh, you know, tonight, I think, you know, yeah. in, in some place. I'm not sure where. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this brings up another point, though, and that Trump has uh, entered the fray and has uh, threatened he's going to have an executive order about, uh, you know, essentially adding more laws against tearing down statues. And one thing that just struck me is there's already laws that say this is illegal and nobody's enforcing yeah. them. So I, I just, I, I'm just curious what your guys thoughts are on the whole. Uh, it's, know, it's, it's like this nonsense. It's, it's like this nonsense about, about, about hate crime, you know, like somebody, some, somebody killed somebody and oh, it's a hate crime. Well, it's, it's murder. We have a laws against murder. What do, what do yeah. we need this, this yeah. added, this added bonus for? So yeah, yeah, this, Leon. This, this, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, is that the same principle as the the one about the law against lynching? I mean, first of all, I didn't know that lynching was still a problem today, and like a, a big means of, of killing someone, murdering right. someone, because that's, you know, it's still murder. Why right. do we have to have hate crime laws? And why do we have to have lynching as a, a separate? It's like, exactly. Uh, is the person more dead because they were lynched to death as opposed uh, exactly. to being shot or stabbed or clubbed or whatever? You know, what, what, what's going on here that is getting everybody all riled up that, that we've got to have, you know, this, this, this kind of extra special law. I don't know. It, so is it the same but thing? You see, you? But you see, this is the thing. This is the thing that is happening. Yes. This was happening in our society. So I, if, if if uh, Derek Chauvin had done what he did to a white man, I should have been less outraged by that. That is the principle that has been uh, perpetrated right now. I should have been less outraged. Right. It should not bother me as much as it does. This is ridiculous. Yeah. This is the kind of nonsense yeah. that's going on. So this yeah. stuff, this stuff about Trump well, coming up with these things about about the money about the monuments is ridiculous. We already have laws against vandalizing property or or, yeah. or, or, yeah. or destroying it. What what we need more laws Correct. for? Yeah, it it almost seems like a, a a law to virtue signal against virtue signaling. <laughs> you know, I mean, these guys with their statues—they're just out there virtue signaling and tearing down other people's property, and then somebody else would say, yeah. "I'm gonna make sure that I make sure everybody knows that I don't like what you're doing." <laughs> right, I call your virtual signaling, and I'm gonna raise you my virtue yeah. signal. I mean, maybe maybe it'll add something where maybe it'll give a legal avenue where he can go in where local officials aren't, you know, enforcing the law that's on the books. And those, I, I don't know. I'm not. Un, I, I, he hasn't come out with the order yet, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. But it always, not, you know, always kind of makes a libertarian scratch his head when somebody's not obeying the law, and they say, "Well, we just need another law." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and then there's that Tenth Amendment thing that he doesn't seem to be too concerned with, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know the, you know the, it's it's within the purview. I mean, if if Seattle wants to let the whole place burn down and and just rubble being left behind, I guess you know from a federal standpoint, from the state, yeah, I can see where the state would would have a right to get involved, but if the federal government got involved, I think that was. And it's uh, speaking of the Chaz, uh, is what you yeah. seem to be talking oh, about. Oh yeah, Chaz. Yeah, yeah. that's Chaz. Is it Chaz? Yes. Well, they keep changing. Or Trump. This uh, is Chaz or Trump or whatever it is. These days. Yeah. But you Capital know, uh, uh, autonomous uh, zone for those who are listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, to, just to add, just to add to Tim's point, though. Um, I mean, the um, Trump doesn't seem to be too concerned about the Tenth Amendment. I think the Supreme Court is not too concerned about the Tenth Amendment, quite frankly, and they should be. I think that some of their rulings have really have really looked kind of suspicious to me as compared to the, as what is stated in the Tenth Amendment. They are part of the federal government now, <laughs> so they have a tendency to side with whatever. With the federal, federal government. government has. Valid point. Valid yeah. point. Valid point. Valid point. Let's say you know, and the statue mania brings up other issues too. I mean, Leon, kind of you alluded to this earlier, but. You know, it doesn't necessarily stop at statues. You know, the you know the naming of all kinds of things goes on too. I mean, Fort Bragg is in the news because Fort right. Bragg is named yeah. after a Confederate general. So, you know, the idea is, is are they going to change the name of Fort Bragg? And you know, some people are starting to get upset about Harvard because Harvard's a university that that I, I was going to say employed slaves, but I mean they they, they used slaves. <laughs> they didn't yeah. employ them. You know? yeah. So they wow. they had yeah. slaves that were I guess on their campus early in the history of building that campus. So you know it's like 
uh, you know, you're going to, you know, it'd be interesting to see if a uh, Harvard alumni was cool with changing the name of Harvard. You know, I think there's, uh, <laughs> I think you'll see a lot of them be against that. <laughs> but, but you see, the, the, it all brings back, comes back to the point, where are you going to draw this fine line? Okay, we just had recently Joe Biden trying to tell me I'm not black because I wouldn't stay on the Democratic plantation. He just told me that. Just a thing. So should he be disqualified from running for president? Okay. Whoa, and that's our that's the sound for our knucklehead noise patrol where we find something ridiculous. Well, as far as our uh, knucklehead noise patrol, we're trying to find something stupid that somebody has said or done over the past week or so and bring that to you as a fun point in the show on. Uh, so recently, Popular Mechanics, the timely issue for their magazine, came out with an article titled, How to Topple a Statue with Science. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's hard to think of uh, anything more, you know, timely and ridiculous, you know, in terms of lawlessness and, and disrespecting, you know, uh, the rights of others, you know, to have a statue, you know, have a have a article telling people how to go out there and, you know, tear down things in public. Yes. Leon, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, well, you know, the next thing you know, they will come out in an article to telling people how to properly rob banks, you know, <laughs> how, to, how, how, to, how, to, how to properly mug mug somebody on a street corner. This is the kind of nonsense that's going on. Politicians and people who should know better are enabling this kind of ridiculousness and this sort of nonsense that is going on in our society right now. It is one thing to want to protest and it's one thing to want to protest the outrage that occurred in Minneapolis. I'm fine with that. Peaceful protest. But all this damn nonsense that we see going on, you want to tear down statues, you want to say, oh, we have to do it properly and all this kind of nonsense. Why are you enabling it? You're going to burn down somebody's private property and we have to enable it yeah. that too? What is yeah, this nonsense? Yeah, yeah talk about virtue signaling. I guess I'll be waiting for the next article of The Economist where they say how to most efficiently loot a store. <laughs> That's right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, we're just about to the end of the show here. Um, and, uh, you know, what, one of the things I, I meant to do at the beginning, but, uh, you know, if you do have any questions or comments or if you have any experiences you want to share with us, uh, there's a scrolling, uh, there the, there's a scrolling um, uh, email address there and send those in. And if you have any experiences, especially with your business or job being, uh, you know, lost to this COVID uh, government actions or the looting or the rioting. We'd love to hear about it and maybe we'll discuss it with you on the show. Uh, so anyways, that's the end of our show and uh, uh, join us next time. Uh, hopefully we'll be back next week for another episode of Libertarian Counterpoint.